Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. This is GNG LinkedIn live segment, Gil and Gurpreet. Um, so today we have an interesting topic that actually Gil came up with, um, employee wellness. We're not, we're gonna talk about employee wellness, but we're also gonna talk about what's happening right now due to COVID-19 um, and why is this important on an individual level and as an employee level, as a company, why are these things really, really important? And one of the things uh, a lot of people are not talking about is sustainability right now when it comes to working parents and kids at home who are schooling their kids. How many hours can a parent possibility work right now? Um, this is something I, I've, I haven't really looked at, into it. I'm not a parent, uh, but I have heard some discussions around this. Even 640 Radio Show had a discussion about this. Um, and I read an article, a little bit of it. I didn't fully read it, but another person has actually raised this concern. But overall, it's not just parents, uh, but it's also just individuals uh, mentally. Like we've talked about this on and off in our segments too. Uh, the entire situation right now is draining. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Let's be real. Let's no longer think this is fun. <laughs> this is not fun anymore per se for many, many people. Um, it is mentally draining. I have to be honest, this past week I have been watched a TV show. I felt like I was a teenager staying up late at 4 a.m. at night and my mom's wondering what the hell is going on. <laughs> But it's like an escape mechanism, right? So a lot of us are probably doing a lot of different things or we are doing different uh, habits right now that may not be our normal selves. And it's not that we're not being normal selves, but it's also our bodies and our mentally and we're physically adapting to... A situation where none of us have ever been in and there's just so many restrictions too like isn't it interesting um so i said openly that i was scared to go to grocery stores guess what no longer now it's like i went today this morning it's normalized for you yeah mask gloves and today I did a little bit something different, actually. Actually, I took my headphones and I just played music. Mm. Actually, it calmed me. So not that, actually, no, I should, I, I'm definitely going to give credit to the music. Uh, I'm not going to downplay it because now that I'm thinking out loud, yeah, it did actually really, really calm me. Where compared to before, I used to be, like, it become, it's a norm, but I still little bit get a little tense. This time, maybe because mentally we're all just so used to it. Um, and an interesting fact I learned today, and uh, and it's actually perfect for doing this because May two four weekends coming, and in Ontario, anyways, they were talking about this. I heard this on six uh, radio six forty. They're talking. No, actually, sorry, not not six forty. It was another radio show. They're talking about cottages. Are we allowed to go if you own a cottage? Uh, there's so many discussions around this. Can you go to your cottage? And you know what they decided? First of all, there was so much confusion. They said yes, no, and now they said the the mayors of those cottage cities said no. If you own a cottage, you can't come to your cottage unless you're already there, uh, but you can't drive up, stay away. And I'm like, wow, why? I get it, I get it, I get it. Maybe um, healthcare reasons, but. In one aspect, we're telling people to get out, go for walks. But then someone owns a cottage. Wouldn't it be a nice escape to be in a cottage right now, even if it's for a weekend, you're surrounded by nature? I, I kind of understand both sides of the coin on that because there is an aspect certainly of that I get why the mayors are saying this, right? Because they don't want spread from an area that has yeah. a denser population and a denser population of people who have been hard, hit harder. They also don't have the services, the hospitals, et cetera, that we have down here with to, to deal with that level of population. So on that level, I do understand where they're coming from. But on the other hand, there's also the aspect of 
You know, we're talking about wellness, the idea of being able to get outside, being able to go for walks. Well, if you live in downtown Toronto from everybody I've spoken to, that's not necessarily easy. It's not easy yeah. to just, you know, cross the sidewalk or cross the street, especially as weather is getting warmer. It's not that easy. So yeah. I really, I really understand both sides of the coin on that. But I want to go back for a second to what you were talking about with your trip to the grocery store. Because right. no, because I think <laughs> to the grocery stores. But it, <laughs> it has been a topic that's come up from us for us a few yes. times. But I think this this journey I think is enlightening though, because one of the things that you talked about right now is that you understood one of your own triggers. And yeah. you took action to take care of your own wellness, to take care of your own trigger. You mitigated that risk because you said, okay, I'm the kind of person that music can calm me. I'm going to find the right music for me, put it in my ears, distract myself from the rest of the world, and reduce the stress that I feel by going to the grocery store. Because so that that is such a crazy thing, by the way, a sentence that we wouldn't have thought of three months ago. I feel stress because I have to go to the grocery store. No, <laughs> no, we would never have thought of that. But it's interesting. Uh, I have to be honest, I didn't take music. I didn't take my headphones to listen to music because I'm stressed. Um, so I'm, I've been, um, I wanted to listen to my religious prayer because mm -hmm. I wanted to get my right, go straight in the morning because it'd be less people, right? Mm -hmm. So I already did that. So I was listening to the hymn or seek hymn mm -hmm. uh, and I was reciting it. And by the time I got to the grocery store, um, because I actually started listening to it while I was home, gathering all my stuff, you know, the grocery bag, your mask, your glove. <laughs> so all that preparation before going to the grocery store, which again, it's a, now it's a norm, right? It's, an, it, it's, it's funny because now it's like a routine. I don't leave the house to go do grocery stores without these items. Um, so but anyways, long story short, by the time I got to the grocery store, my hands were done, right? So I was like, oh, mm, okay, I'm not gonna do anything. Then I was like, no. You know what? Yeah, I get like this can be a little bit like too much, right? Like the little bit of an anxiety. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna listen to music. And so I started, I I I I didn't blast it in my headphones, but anyways, I had good music going and I kept like bumping around and like dancing, and I just totally forgot where I was, who's around me. I wasn't paying attention, who got too close to me, like you know, like sometimes that little stuff can get like oh my god don't get close to me right like that wasn't me i'm just being honest when i go it's like don't it's, it's, me, right look uh, i'm like that when i walk down the street outside i am like that so i oh, totally yeah, understand yeah. you doing that but that kind of ties back to the whole idea that we're talking around about around wellness because you know talking about the triggers and the impacts of our wellness well Pretty much all of us have been had our wellness impact in one way or another by COVID. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talk about the physical wellness of people who want to go to gyms, want to exercise, exercise in different ways, are now limited in that. Or social wellness of how we need, some people just need to see their friends. To, they need to see people and, quite frankly, over a screen, quite, isn't quite the same. Yeah. And yeah. so... Then there's the, I mean, the overarching economic impact and the fact that, what was it? I read that 50% of Canadians at minimum are worried about their jobs right now. And so the reality is, is that we have so many new pressures because, I mean, it wasn't like modern society had enough pressures as it was. But now suddenly we have all of these new pressures that we're facing that we all have to adapt to that we all have to adjust yeah. to. So you mentioned you know, parents, you know, like you know, that's that's one pressure of having the kids, yeah. You know, so when, so interesting, sorry to cut you off, uh, because you said something so interesting about wanting to see human, like friends, um, and that's kind of creating some mental like stress for us. And I, I'm gonna tell you something that is so true. It's not even just for adults. My friend actually lives a couple of streets away from me. Um, her three kids, her daughter, it was it this week or was it last week? I don't know, I'm losing track of my days now. I, it's either this week or was last week, I don't know. 
but it just very recently my friend calls me and goes what are you doing just like in the evening i'm like oh it was this week i'm like nothing uh and she's like okay you want to go for a walk it was a really like it was a nice day i'm like yeah sure actually it's funny you call because i'm planning to go i was planning to go for a walk anyways she goes yeah her daughter who's uh, 11 told her she was gonna take her kids for a walk and then she said um so in our language uh your friend your mom's friend a close friend of your mom is like it's like a sister right so like my, okay. my sister's kids call me Masi, me which means aunt but okay. it, it's defined it Masi means your mom's sister okay. uh so my best friend's kids call me that too so they're like called uh so my nickname is gopi so they're like call gopi Masi. And she's like, no, because of social distancing. She goes, I'm tired of seeing all five of us faces every single day. I need to see someone else's face. I understand social distancing. She can walk six feet in front of us, or she can be across the street from us and walk <laughs> on the other side of the sidewalk. But I need to see another human being. <laughs> and I started laughing. But now that you're seeing it, it's... You know what? Now that we're talking about it, it's like, yeah, you know what? It is. It's 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 just not us, but it's also kids that are being. Some kids are being impacted about around seeing an actual human being. Absolutely, I know for my son, uh, social aspect of all of this is probably the biggest impact on him. The fact of how much he misses his friends and everything that third or fourth week, maybe third week of all of this, I introduced him to Zoom and I introduced him to having Zoom calls with his friends. He spent basically the next two days on calls with them because he was just so excited to be able to talk to them and, and relate to them. And when I and when I talked to him and I talked to him about, you know, what, what he's missing, what he's enjoying, all of those things, the biggest thing he misses is his opportunity to see his friends and to have that kind of interaction he thrives off of it and we all have different things we thrive off yeah. of one of the things we all benefit from is a certain level of stability in particular job stability that many many people are lacking right now so yeah. if wellness is hard to come by and hard to recognize the power of in normal times it's even harder now because we have all of these extra triggers and anxieties i mean every study i see shows that sig there's a significant increase in the number of people suffering from anxiety and depression mm -hmm. right now than yes. were just a couple of months ago. Yeah, I was hearing the same thing on the radio show on 640, and then they've opened up like more free online services. Um, so let's talk about how, okay, so we, we actually went into personal stuff, but now let's talk about how this translates into an employee's work life. Like when we are experiencing all these extra challenges in our life right now that are causing us to, that's causing our mental health. Let's be honest, right? It's impacting our mental health, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. You talked about the gym. I actually work from home and I started actually implementing that I'm going to go to the gym because I need to get out of my house, right? Because I'm too used to always being at home. Now I don't have that outlet, but guess what? So do all of us now that work from home. We are stuck at home. Yes people are getting out uh but it's not the same way right like yeah fine you can go there are more people my system i was telling me there's more people buying outdoor stuff like bikes and stuff like that uh, kids playgrounds whatever costco sold out of everything to do with outdoors because we need stuff to do um now my wife tried to buy a basketball net for my boys and they're sold, sold out, out everywhere yeah everywhere <laughs> so I'm going to actually talk about, let's just talk about how this impact, because I want to talk about silver lining a little bit under this whole outdoor Absolutely. stuff, which I think it's a little bit was needed where we're too used to just being coped out in the house. I was laughing with, uh, actually I was on the phone with my sister-in-law. I didn't even know there was kids in my neighborhood, especially on the back seat. Uh, now I do because they're playing in their backyard. I never seen those kids before. <laughs> That's cool. That person has kids. <laughs> like I the people behind me, right? But even in the front, my street, I know a couple of people around me. 
Uh, but other people, you just didn't see their kids. But now you see them wandering around the streets, walking, and which is actually a good thing. But going back to employee wellness, when you have all this extra things we're dealing with mentally, physically, our kids can't go out, it does impact our work. Absolutely, it impacts our work. And so from the managers and the employees that I've been speaking to, there's really one broad distinction that I found, if I could generalize a bit, between those who are struggling with their employee experience versus those that are dealing with it the best they can. And that comes from mindset. And it comes from the mindset of how you see people in the business. It comes from how you see people in the business in that are they seen as resources and replaceable and just parts of a machine? Or have you always seen them as humans that you care about them as a human being? You and I were talking earlier that I, I saw a study yesterday that 40% of employees have said that through all of this, their manager hasn't even asked how they're doing, how they're handling all of this. So that generally would demonstrate a perspective that I'm not concerned about how this person is as a human or I'm scared of the answer of how this person is as a human. So I'm just going to keep everything very business focused. And in this time, we can't do that. So really just by starting with the acknowledgement of there's a human being on the other end of this call, there's a human being on the other end of this Zoom call, whatever it is, that in talking about silver lining, I have spoken to a few people and seen a few people who have mentioned that it has humanized people, that they yeah. dislike certain other people less because instead of being that pain in that other department, they're that person who has two kids and, you know, has this book in the background or whatever it is, is that you're learning more about them as a human. So absolutely, I, I hope there's a silver lining. There's still 40% of people whose bosses haven't even asked, haven't even said, how are you handling all of this? So funny, um, no, not funny, interesting that you're saying this because uh, last week I came across something on LinkedIn. I don't know who posted this to be honest, but I did grab the picture. It's, and it made me start thinking, Yes, it's even if you are asking someone, how are you? It's not good enough to ask, how are you? Majority of us are wired to just respond with an automatic response. Fine. I'm good. I'm, good. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Everything's good. So instead of asking, how are you? So there was this, I don't know if people can see, but there was this, I, I grabbed this picture and I saw it online. And it said, questions you can ask instead of, how are you? What is something interesting that happened today? What have you been reading, listening to, watching lately? How? So that's funny because a lot of us are either reading, watching TV. A lot of us are filling our time with a lot of stuff. So that was actually a good thing to ask. What can I make your day easier right now? Sorry, how can I make your day easier right now? What has improved for you today? What did you do to take care of yourself today? Have there been any changes in your feeling? What made you smile today? What has been hardest for you this week? So that touches back to what you just said. Um, is there anything you want to talk about from your day? What do you wish you did a little less of today? That's actually a really good one. What did Most you of these are really excellent uh, <laughs> questions. Yeah. If you could do any part of today over again, what would it be? What would you like to be, no, sorry. What would you like to be different? What would you like to be different tomorrow? I guess that one should different be Different like, than today. Like yeah. what would you like to, tomorrow to be different than yeah. today? Yeah. When did you feel appreciated, understood, loved today? What are, you, what are you most excited for this week? What do you wish you did more of today? So these are were actually like, yeah, really great question to replace with just saying, how are you? I don't think any of us should 
ask how are you anymore because uh, I know I do this all the time. If someone asks me how are you, automatically response, I'm good, I'm fine. It's just I'll a nice I'm not it good, I'm fine. I'm not I'll it. be honest with you. It depends who's asking me the question and in what context. I guess I've long been known for my candor. So when people ask me how I'm doing, I don't generally hide it if I'm having a bad day. How you doing? Eh, fine. You can tell I'm not actually fine, right? I'm not hiding. I'm not uh, I'm not hiding anything. So um, so it's interesting. But one thing I really always want to add, because for a lot of managers, asking these questions is something new asking these questions is uncomfortable for both you and the person you're asking the question because of the environment and because of the experience that you've created so and, and i see this a lot on linkedin and i see a lot of suggestion of ask questions ask questions ask questions but, but that that's the overkill too that can be but but it's also incomplete advice because one of the keys about questions isn't just sitting here and asking you the right question. It's also about how do I respond? If you tell me something uncomfortable that I'm not used to, hey, Gurpreet, what was the worst part of your day? And you tell me something miserable that happened to you. I can't bristle at it. I can't like say, ooh, or be upset at it or anything. I or, have to watch my response and I have to be respectful. Missing. Or, or dismiss it. Or, or just say, oh, that didn't happen. Oh, that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Don't worry. Be strong. <laughs> exactly. In, 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 in that kind of response <laughs> kills the next question you ask. So if the purpose of this, of communication and asking questions, is to elicit information, to try to understand more than you did before, then the onus is on you as the question asker to create the environment where the person will actually want to answer the question. Because if you create an uncomfortable environment, they're still just going to say fine. Yeah. They're as good as your questions, as, as in those are some very good questions there. If you haven't created the right environment, so what's something that uh, you know is stressing out this week? Oh, what? No, nothing. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm doing great. And I've even seen surveys about that, about how uh, especially parents, when asked by their managers how everything's doing, feel extra pressure right now to say fine. Yeah. Feel true. extra pressure to hide how difficult it is from their managers. But let's be real. How many of us are really going to be so open with our managers unless you have a really, really really like i want to emphasize the real part like really good relationship because i've had one or two at least one really good manager like i mean really good boss that we had a good that i still talk to him till this day that's how and good it was it. his behavior yeah. and his environment that created that yeah he so built that him. opportunity that when he asked you a question you were giving him the honest answer yeah, and he like, was a better manager because you were giving him honesty. You were yeah. breaking down the iceberg of, or he was breaking down the iceberg of ignorance by creating a psychologically safe environment. And that's yeah. always my worry when I see everybody giving me advice of ask questions. Well, what next? What happens after a bad manager asks a question? Yeah, because, okay, talking about my boss, right? that he, he did create that environment to the point where, so I lived with my parents when I was working with them. Uh, I was like 20 something. And so winter, you know, it, it was a lot of snow. One day it was a lot of snow and my older brother said, you know, me and dad have to go to work because it's our business, uh, but you don't. So why are you gonna risk going on the streets, driving in this condition? Stay at home. And in our culture, yeah, your older brother's telling you to stay at home and your parents telling you to stay at home, you stay at home. I told my boss the truth. I didn't say I'm sick. I didn't call in sick. I told my boss. And that's because he created that environment. Had I, if he didn't create that, I'd be like, I'm sick. I'm not coming in. Or the roads are really bad. I don't feel safe. 
you know, like I'm just gonna say the road condition, I might be late, right? But no, because he created that environment, I was open to just really tell him the truth. And a lot of people, when we're, it's not even managers as an employer, and I can say this openly, and I've seen this because I'm in HR, we sometimes, even HR, we actually create, unknowingly, we create an environment where, yeah, we want employees to be honest and transparent, but then when they are, as you said, how do we react, right? So if someone needs a mental day off, can your employee come to you and say, you know what, I need a mental day off? And what are you going to say? Are you going to say, sure, no problem? Or are you going to be like, what the hell? Like, what's going to go into your mind, right? Um, or are I, you going to ask why and start to, start why, to ask exactly, questions, right? right? I, 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 it, it, it's a really, it's a great point. And also, I think what's really important, and again, none of us, we're not experts here, right? Uh, you're not an expert. I'm an expert. I just want to make that clear for while well, so anybody that's watching this is we're not saying we're experts, but I also believe that it's not. And I learned this while I was going through a grief. It's not about asking questions or saying how are you doing, because when someone asks me how am I doing, my uh, like I, I was like, are you kidding me? You know how I'm doing. I just lost my dad, right? Like you can't like. You can't ask how you're doing. And you know what? Now that we're talking about this, it's kind of like the same situation. You can't keep going around asking people how you're doing. Come on. Like, how long we've we been in this now? Everybody is having one time or another is having either mental breakdown, anxiety, stressing out with stuff. A lot of people are having a hard time coping with this. It's it's a big change. Change is hard to do. It's hard to cope with. So instead of, I think the best way to approach this is, isn't to say how you're doing, but instead maybe, not maybe, look at executing a plan. Can you cut down on the, all the meetings you're having? Because uh, my, my cousin's experiencing this where his team is just jumping on calls and having all these meetings and guess what? No work's being done. And they had they they had their actually works in retail in the US, the stores are opening up in one state. So they had to do uh, they had to make sure the systems are working, but the systems weren't working and then he had to spend the entire weekend because they were opening on Monday. And he was talking to his teammates, and then he said to one one of the teammates or an open discussion that, you know, but yeah, great, but where's our output? Where's the output? And he's, and then the uh, one employee uh, did get a little bit frustrated and he walked away. My, and my cousin's a manager. Sometimes I'm, I'm not saying manager's job is easy. It's not like, yeah, we're like, and this is where I'm talking about meetings, doing all these meetings. And that's what the employee said, but we're always on a call, right? The meetings are being extended and then talking and talking and talking and talking. And the meetings go for one hour to two hours to three hours. Yeah, when is the employee supposed to do work, right? Because that manager was told at some point there's no such thing as over communication. And so that's, that's what they exactly. interpreted as, as, hey, so that means I should be con inter uh, communicating with them constantly. I also just want to add one thing to what you were saying about the manager shouldn't just be asking how you do and how you're doing. But there's also the other side to it of, they should be also sharing because if you don't model that kind of vulnerability of saying, you know what, everything's imperfect right now, and this is how it's imperfect in my life, then you're not necessarily going to draw that out of the other individual, and especially if it hasn't happened in the past. Yeah. But if you draw, and this is an opportunity for managers who didn't do this before to draw the line in the sand and say, hey, I get we didn't do this before, we were always at the office, we always thought this different way, but now we're under the situation, now that we're at home, et cetera, let's take a moment and ask one of those questions and share the answer to one of those questions because that kind of transparency, that kind of vulnerability will encourage others to follow along because if you're trying to still promote the perfect manager who has all the answers image, then they're going to still try to promote the perfect employee who has no problems image. Let's, let's, let's. Good point, because I want to add, there's no such thing as a perfect manager and there's no such thing as a perfect employee. We are human beings. We are not meant to be perfect. So uh, I think that alone 
needs to be let's remove there's a lot of things that we need to e even remove out of our vocabulary and that is perfect managers there's no such thing as perfect managers no such thing as uh, perfect uh, employees there's, we're just human and we have to navigate and adapt to situation and vulnerability the best way to build a uh, transparency or any type of relationship with anybody is showing your vulnerability you can't just always be i'm perfect and have to be composed i think we also been conditioned to always be not it's not like be perfect but be professional don't overshare don't open your mouth about your personal life at work be blah, a resource blah, 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 not blah, a human blah. That's it. It's be a resource, not a human. Yeah. The, the, and, our, our workplaces have stripped away our humanity over the years to in, in the fruitless effort of greater productivity, greater loyalty, whatever it is. It hasn't worked. The more we strip that humanity away from people, the worse impact we have tying up all back to their wellness. It, it's 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 an unwell place where a human being is treated as that resource and looked at just for their output and not for who they are as a person. So even like okay, so talking about output, I know we're going a little bit over here. Um, I saw something where uh, another individual on LinkedIn posted that I think he's the CEO of a small company, and they made an executive decision to uh, go to four days instead of five days he didn't actually share too much de like i don't remember all the details but there's one detail that wasn't there and i kind of like been thinking about it you may have reduced your five day to four days but what about the workload has the workload been the same is it still going to say the same from just because you reduced the one to four days but what about the workload i don't think no one's looking at the workload i don't think anyone's asking but like you focus on workload and productivity it's you can do four days five days it's not even about that but it's about realistically speaking your workforce what's a what's, what's a reasonable workload work work is it parents do you have parents who have kids who are homeschooling so i don't think there's a solution like that's a gloves like one fit everybody you gotta actually if you want to really take care of your employees well-being right now you have to sit there and take a moment and think about okay well who are our people what are their home situations are they married do they have kids because the, okay if you don't have kids but you're married yeah i think you might be getting sick of your uh your partner too, because that uh, there was another discussion I, I heard on the radio show uh, that some people are married, but now they're seeing a whole different side of their partner because now they're stuck at home. Well, they're seeing each other a lot more. They're seeing each other a lot more. You're, there are many, look, there are many relationships of friends of mine that I've known that they have a wonderful relationship, but they live mostly separate lives outside of their home life. Oh. You don't have your home life 24 hours a day. Now it's all, you know, all on top of each other, on yeah. top of all of these other stresses that we've been talking about. So I read somewhere that the uh, divorce rate in China was going up as the uh, as the uh, lockdown went on. It, it, uh, I'm I, not surprised I'm by not that. Surprised. I'm not. Actually, you know what? I was first, when this whole thing happened, I was thinking of something else. And now, because it was new at that time, not that it's gone on longer. That's what they were talking about this radio show was talking about. And interesting. And I was like, yeah, that's actually true. Unless especially with people who are living you're married or you're in a relationship and you're living together you may be still be living two separate lives yeah it's absolutely. a lot of people absolutely and, they, and it works for them under normal circumstances in their normal lives that's the right relationship for them that's the right experience for them but now, and right now they don't have the opportunity to live that life so they're forced to live a different life yeah. that their marriage wasn't cut out for so well being of your employees also like circumstances everyone's uh, household circumstances are different so i think the best solution, if any companies out there really want to take care of their employees right now, is to really 
come together and ask yourself, what can we do that would be right for employees' mental health? It's not about productivity. You have to actually look at, okay, how many of your employees have kids at home that they're homeschooling? That's a, I don't, I, you know, we talk about superheroes and how there's over, and then the thing about that, that, that whole overkill, a lot of people are talking about healthcare superheroes. I'm sorry, but so are the parents. I'm not a parent, so hats off to parents who are juggling work and homeschooling their kids. They're also superheroes right now. Yeah, no, it's 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 incredible the load that has been how, put on their shoulders. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's how, huge. I don't know how parents are doing it. I don't. I'm not a parent. I can't relate. But just the thought of like I, I'm surrounded by my sister's a parent, my best friend's a parent. Like I'm surrounded by uh, individuals who have kids and, and younger kids, high school kids. Okay, they're self sufficient, but like anybody that's like under high school hats off to uh, uh, parents who are juggling this stuff but that's where the employer comes in and you can humanize that and ask it's not even about asking what do you need to ask it's actually a given that they're struggling right now to juggle the two different things that are happening so what what can you do to make that employee's life easier second is well, everybody's. How can you make your every single person in your company's life easier? Everyone's situation is different. But what can you do? Parents, yeah, you can maybe alternate and give them less work or or maybe cut their work time in half from eight hours to maybe allow them to only work part time and four hours. Flexibility. But the problem is right now, from most things that I've read, people are actually having longer work days than they normally do. Yes. And managers are expecting them to have longer work days because, hey, you don't have a commute. You don't you don't have anything else to do. So now I'll expect you to work a 12 hour day instead of an eight hour day or a 10 hour day. Right. So that's I think that longer uh, the longer hours of work also stemming from these meetings yeah i'm being Fair honest yeah. yeah yeah no you're the absolutely meetings. right because when you it's get work done meeting. not in the meeting <laughs> the meetings are going longer than you would do it if you were in the office the meetings are going long then you have let's have happy hour let's have lunch together you're adding as i said in the beginning it was fine and fun maybe because it was we don't know we were going to be in it as long. Surprisingly, I haven't seen anything on LinkedIn about this anymore where people are actually, no, I, I saw something where people did a pets day. So everybody went on Zoom call and had their pets, right? And fine, everybody looked all happy, but I looked at it and I, my thought, I really wonder how many of people were really happy doing this. Look, to each their own, not my style, but to each their own. But they, but there's a reason why over the last week and a half, every other post on LinkedIn has been about the Zoom fatigue. <laughs> because this is that's what's caused it, is all of these meetings. You know, if you want to be a great boss, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Uh, you got to give autonomy and you have to stop micromanaging. You got to stop thinking that you got to do all these meetings. Let your employee, you want to be a good manager, you have to let your employees decide what's best for them and how is the best way for them to work right now. Yeah. I have, um, I've taken on some interns because of co-op hours and I felt really bad. And I know someone, um, some someone was trying to be a smart ass about their comments, but I didn't reply back. But today I'm going to talk about this is because someone's like, well, how are you going to manage all these people? And you know what? I've been doing perfectly fine. It's been a couple of weeks. Why? I don't micromanage them. I don't tell them come on Zoom calls every single day. And we do calls. We do team um, calls. I give them work and I tell them, here's my number. If you need me or whatever, I'm there for you. We can drop them on calls. I give them the autonomy to decide what works for them, when to work, what not to do. I'm not telling anybody you have to work these hours. Autonomy is a key fundamental aspect of occupational wellness. We want to be the masters of our own destiny when it comes to our own work. 
that is so crucial for us in having that aspect of our wellness because when we don't it impacts our self-worth it impacts our self-esteem because hey look if i'm told to do everything what what value do i have again it goes back to the whole resource versus human a resource will do it the exact same way every time the way they're they, they're programmed to do it a human might find a better way to do it and they're going to do it their way and that's that's really uh an important thing yeah so great point we're gonna end this segment on that note if you employee wellness to sum it up is as Gil said, uh, autonomy, right? You can build you you can build your employee wellness uh, on autonomy, giving your employees the autonomy and the freedom. Especially right now, I think it's more than more. It's actually needed. It's necessary right now to give your employees the autonomy, full control of their work, and let them decide how to work, what time to work what hours to work because let's be honest we have the weekends maybe the employee doesn't need to put eight hours during the week but maybe they can put that split their time and spread it over seven uh seven days yeah yeah that's what giving I, them that freedom, that's giving them that freedom I, I started doing now there's nothing to do on the weekend Fair enough. So i'm like i spread my entire week off now and it's been fine right so yeah give the autonomy give them the control don't force employees to work monday to friday and it has to be nine to five or whatever hours you want them rely be, be flexible and ask yourself what you can do for them and show your own uh vulnerability and actually talk about how you are dealing with this whole situation because this is the perfect time to actually bond with your employees because you all we all have something in common right now. We are all going through COVID-19 and it is one challenging thing. I don't know one person out there that is not struggling with COVID-19. So we can be, you can have open discussions about COVID-19, but that's how you bond together is being actually openly first sharing your own truth about COVID-19 and, and be there for your employees. Don't demand things and don't over communicate and don't keep asking how are you doing if you really don't have any interest to know how they're doing <laughs> uh, but no it's the truth sometimes oh, you're right let's you're do right. it because we think it's the polite thing to do so be human put yourself in their shoes we are already in the shoes because we're all going through it um so on that note we'll get we're going to end this segment we're going to be back on monday gail and i have actually have a lot of great topics um that we're going to be communicating shortly with everybody this segment's going to continue every monday and thursday this is gail and gurpreet gail is an employee experience uh expert specialist i'm a hr expert we've collaborated together we came together because of covid19 and we're going to continue segments and we're going to talk about uh hr employee experience anything to do with workplaces so tune in monday we'll disclose our list of the topics for the next few weeks and so you guys have the segments and you know what topic we're talking in the time's always going to be 12 30. if you miss this you can catch the replay on my linkedin uh, profile go under my profile and just click on the activity and you'll see the linkedin live thank you so much for tuning in if there's a topic you want us to cover Feel free to reach out to Gail. Feel free to reach out to me or type a comment below with the topic you think you, we, we should cover and we will be more than happy to cover it. Hope everybody's uh, doing well and take a break. Wellness is also about taking breaks, knowing when to walk away from something. If you can't concentrate on your work, walk away. Do recharge the fun. battery. Yeah, recharge your battery and manager should be okay with that to do as well. So recharge and we will see you guys on Monday. So in, in the meantime, also have a good weekend. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.